I love attending Hoyoke Community College, and the reason is because I find it to be very inclusive here at HCC. One example of that is an experience I had with an online video homework assignment. There were no closed captioning. So when I brought up the video, I could see the people speaking, but I couldn't hear anything because I'm deaf and there were no closed captions. So I emailed my professor who immediately emailed me back and said that they would take care of it. And so when I went to bring up the video again, there were the captions and I was able to complete my homework assignment. Well, I think about the learner in the classroom, they're here for a reason because they want to learn and if I have content that they can't access, um, then I've eliminated them from the learning process. I think about things like what I put up on Moodle, can a screen reader read them? I'm thinking about can a student access the material in multiple ways, right? So if it's a video, is it captioned? If it's not captioned, is there a transcript? for many years and before studying educational technology I didn't really address accessibility issues in my online portions of my class. I kind of figured well if someone comes along and needs an accommodation I'll definitely figure out how to address it. But what I've come to understand is that there are so many things you can do on the upfront of the design to make your course more accessible not only for people with disabilities but people with different learning styles, people whose first language may not be English, so I believe my role is to research and understand as much as I can about developing online accessible content and activities and to share that knowledge with faculty during the design process. Making the course and the material accessible from the beginning is what our goal is because that allows us to be ready from day one, where a student will come in and their material is ready for them. They don't have to go and try and run around and get it all ready or find someone who can get it ready. The professor will use some material that he's always used for a number of times, a number of semesters, a number of years. So it becomes a copy of a copy of a copy. And it doesn't give us the ability or flexibility to convert it so that it will be easier for the student to read or even for us to interpret it or redo it. I started making my videos for my online course, which are now fully captioned. The students can stop and start the videos, as well as repeat things that they missed it. The videos also come with a set of guided notes that students can print out and use to follow along with the video, or simply go through in lieu of the video. And now that I have all the things made, I use them for my in-person classes as well to supplement what we do in class. So this is the Assistive Technology Center. We have a variety of different softwares on campus. I use JAWS for Windows. It's a screen reading technology for the blind. And it's been very useful for me. That's it talking right now. Uh, we also have ZoomTech, which is a large screen enlargement software for people with low vision. And it also will read the screen to people. And another product that we found very useful on campus is called Read and Write. We also have Dragon Naturally Speaking that we use on our campus for those who can't use a keyboard effectively. What we've currently been trying to do is close the loop so that the students with disabilities do not have to wait for access to be implemented, but think of it in advance. And closing this loop would make ADA access a reality, not a dream. So the main thing that we see in math that we need to be careful of is writing equations that can be read by a screen reader. When to evaluate graphic 1.59 inches wide by 0 0.5 inches. All pictures. This is a Word document where I used equation editor in Word to write my math equation. And when you look at it, not using a screen reader, it looks really nice. But now look what happens if I use the screen reader to read the equation. Solve graphic 1.31 inches wide by 0 0.38 inches wide by something. Land. Land. It's useless. Land. So equation editor for Word is useless. 
So what we're looking at right now is a program called LaTeX, where I use computer code to write formulas for math, and then it comes out as a PDF. And it actually seems like the PDF works pretty nicely with the screen reader if we use LaTeX. I'm a business administration mass transfer student. I'm actually legally blind and my main accommodations consist of a note taker for my classes because I can't really see anything that's put on boards or screens. As far as computer software goes, I use ZoomText, which is like a magnification software. Um, I use JAWS, which is a screen reading software on the computer. Space. Space. So that's Space. supposed to read a word and usually JAWS if you're on any type of other website, it'll go to the first word of, you know, at the top of the page. So, for instance, this is the first question. So, neither of those computer softwares that I use would work with it. So, um, I was in the um, lab one day for about five hours or so on a thing that usually takes people about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. I was doing it for over five hours. I had to have um, people come in and be my reader. I'm very comfortable using the internet to gain an education here at HCC and I find the professors and the staff to be very supportive and all around wonderful. It feels like it's a lot of work. It feels like there's a lot of upfront, I don't know how to do this. I don't. When I think about the way forward, I think about collaboration. I know my material as a math teacher, but there are all these other people out there who want to help me to understand the issues of accessibility. We're very committed here in online programs to support faculty in making the needed adjustments and pulling in people from the library and OSDVS to work together as a team to ensure that our courses are as accessible as possible to our students.